Hey, welcome back to Mechanical Pros. Today we're going to be talking about the Navstat BRC1E73 controller for Daikin VRB commercial indoor units. I'm going to just cover a few of the basic things we'd run in out in the field, a lot of customer service calls, really basics, how to navigate and the different menus. In later videos we'll get into in-depth menus, but we're just going to go over the basics today. So the first thing I want to say is before you can make any changes to this stat, as you can see, the screen's kind of a dull color right there. It has to be illuminated before you can do any changes. So the first thing you want to do is press any button at all, and then the screen lights up. Now we can navigate the controller. So it's pretty straightforward. You've got your mode of operation button, on off button, fan speed, cancel button in the center here, your up and down arrow keys, and then your menu slash OK or select, right? So it looks pretty straightforward. Here's my menu. You go right there. This is just one of the menus, and as it says in the header, the main menu, and at the top you can see it says page one of page two. Now the really cool thing about these nav stats is the equipment is very intelligent equipment, so you're only going to get items displayed on the nav stat that pertain to the particular piece of equipment that this nav stat is connected to. On this one, because I have a 3x3 cassette, it gives me different options than it would if I had, say, a ducted unit. Like, for example, it gives me airflow direction. If I had a ducted unit, I wouldn't have powered louvers that could swing up and down to have that option. But because I, it knows automatically when it connects to the printed circuit board in that indoor unit, it's telling the controller these are the options to give me. So I can go in and I can decide what airflow direction do I want. As you can see, this is going to be the way the air blows out of the uh, louvers on the cassette unit. Many options to choose from. This is the direction the air is going to blow. You can have it blowing almost straight down. You can have it swing. So in other words, your louvers are going to oscillate up and down and let that air distribute across the room evenly. Or you can even put in an automatic position. Automatic's a little tricky in some cases. It's sort of looking where for hot spots in the room, so to speak, and it's going to direct more air that way. The ideal position I found customers usually like is either not blowing directly on them across the ceiling and then down to the floor like that, or a lot of customers will like the oscillated swing position. Another cool feature about this particular unit, I'm going to cancel to go back a page on that. I can also decide and choose and make individual louvers blow in different directions. Maybe I've got one louver is blowing on this person's desk and I can change the position on that louver and I've got four louvers in total and I can basically take each louver and decide which position I want the airflow to blow out of. Really cool feature. Again, it's going to be particular to the type of indoor unit this Navstat's on. If I just had a ducted unit connected to it, I wouldn't have these options to do louver positions. Let's go back a page. You can also set a schedule, as you can in most thermostats. I can set an off timer. Maybe I'm doing the service and I just want the unit to run for an hour. I could set it to shut off in an hour. Or if I were the end user, you know, I want to come in on the weekends. It's not scheduled to run. I'm going to do something for a few hours. I can set that up to be on three hours. And know when I walk away, I don't have to go back and turn the system off. It'll just turn off. Obviously, Celsius Fahrenheit selection, maintenance information, which could be contact information or any kind of unit information in there. This one we'll talk quite a bit about here, configuration. We hear about this one a lot. So I'm going to go back to the home screen here. And as you can see on my screen, I have my time displayed, what my room set point temperature is, and here's my fan speed. My fan speed's on high, which shows the three bars, right? See when it changes when I go fan speed? And then it shows that my louvers are on swing. But what we run into a lot with this system from the end user is they'll see that set to temperature. What we're used to seeing on a thermostat is what the actual room temperature is. That's not telling me the room temperature, that's telling me what the set point is. I can go into the menu and I can choose to display that room temperature or not display the room temperature. Because we got a little callbacks about this, we almost always go ahead and set up the room temperature to display. So by doing that, I've got to light the screen back up, press my menu, I'm going to scroll down to my second page. There I am, page 2 of 2, go to my configuration. I can choose contrast adjustment and make the screen brighter or dimmer. Or I go to display, and this is where I'm going to decide what type of display do I want. A detailed display, which is what I had displayed, showed the time of day, the set point, my fan speed, and all those good things. But then down here, what item do I want to display? This will trip some folks up sometimes. Here's my options, none, outside air temperature, 
That is not currently available at this time. Room temperature is available. System temperature is not available either at this present time. So I've really only got a couple options. I can either have nothing displayed or the room temperature, but that's what everybody wants to see. So now there it is. It shows me my set point is 72 and my room temperature is actually 75. In a video coming up, we're gonna talk about getting into field settings because another thing to know before you ever set that room temperature to display is to know the indoor unit has a thermistor in it that looks at the room temperature and this stat also has a thermistor. The equipment comes defaulted to use the thermistor in the unit. So if I set this up to display that room temperature and I haven't made that change to tell it to display off of this, you're probably going to be a couple degrees off of what the stat's displaying and what the room temperature actually is because we're sampling the air in the indoor unit, not down here at the sensor. The thinking behind that makes a lot of sense when this gear ships out. They have no idea what type of stat you're going to use. Maybe you're going to use one that doesn't have a sensor. We always need to know what that room temperature is, so they default it. So the indoor unit is always looking at the, the room temperature. We'll have to make a setting change in this stat to make sure we're using this thermistor. So again, if you ever decide to use the room temperature, make sure you set this thermistor up, and we're going to cover that in depth in field settings in a video to come. Another one that's very common on this stat is the, the lock feature. So this comes up quite a bit. I want to lock the stat out. You read the book that comes with it. It says hold the menu button down for five seconds and then your stat's locked. And the little key symbol comes up tells me it's locked. Well, here's the kicker with that. You press the menu button again and it tells you how to unlock it. We don't want that. It just says hold the menu down for five seconds and it unlocks it. So it kind of defeats the purpose to lock the stat off if somebody walks up and presses a button and it tells them how to unlock it. So here is the key to locking this stat and this gets a lot of people because it's hard to remember. You have to simultaneously hold the mode, fan speed, cancel, and right arrow key. Press them and release them. So let's try it. Doesn't always happen first go. Press and release. Now let's hit a button and see. Oh, my key symbol. Now I'm locked. Nothing I press is going to do and it's not going to tell me how to unlock this stat. So if you come across one that's locked like that, sometimes it's, it's difficult finding that information you know, you can Google search it, put in the part number of the nav stat, which is handy. They print it on the very bottom of the stat, so you can just walk up and see what it is. How to unlock a BRC1E73. Might take you a couple pages of flipping through it before you find it, but that's the key to it. You have to simultaneously press these four buttons, mode, fan speed, cancel, right arrow key. Light up the screen first. Press your button. Now let's see if we're unlocked. Yep, see I can make set point changes now. If you're working on them all the time, you'll remember it. If you only see these things ever so often, you're probably going to forget which four keys it is. There's a couple other menus. I'll show you how to access them real quick, but again, they're, they're going to be in-depth as we go through the settings. So this menu that we just discussed, that's for your end user. That's, that's for your homeowner or your, your business owner that's got Daikin equipment in their building. Not a whole lot they can do in there to really change the way the unit operates, but they can change what they're looking at and they can set some things up. There is another menu, actually two other menus. These are more for the service techs out in the field or the, the person who's commissioning the equipment. So again, you gotta start with your screen lit up. Now you hold the cancel button for about five or six seconds and then now we just opened up another menu. This is the service settings menu and as you can see, there's three pages in service settings. This is when you should be done when you're setting the gear up at startup is when you're going to want. This is where I'm going to tell this to use this thermistor if I'm displaying my room temperature on my stats. So, but as you can see, lots of things you can put in here. You can throw a test operation mode for your indoor unit, run your fan and things like that. Maintenance contact if you for one, some reason wanted to put someone's name and number in there. Field settings. This is the... Uh, most heavily used setting for us when we're doing startups on these things or service in general. I can change so many things in field settings. They can be very confusing if you haven't done it before. So like I said, we're gonna do another video on that that shows that, but uh, this is where you would enter that feature. Energy savings options, handy. You can do setback limitations and set up your configurations for setback. Prohibit function, we can decide Maybe we want to prohibit modes of operation. Maybe we don't want it to go in the heat mode. Maybe we want to lock the fan out for some reason. We can also come in here and we can prohibit buttons from being used. And so not only can we lock the stat out, 
we can lock out specific buttons. You have to get in the service setting to do that. Set point differentials, group addressing, very big one at startup. Group addressing, indoor air net addressing, and field settings are the major things we use when we're starting this gear up. But here's another really cool one. So these are thermistor values. I can look at my superheat on my indoor unit because I have expansion valve in my indoor unit. I can see my return air temperature is 74, my gas pipe temp 51, and my liquid pipe 45. So I can look at that right there and see that I've got about a six degree superheat. That's pretty good on a VRV system. Not all the indoor units will have this. Depends on the vintage and the equipment type, but most of the newer stuff will have this feature. And I'll show you another menu that will actually show you expansion valve pulses and things like that. But that's really handy if you're walking through and doing a quick PM or maybe a quick troubleshooting call. They're saying, hey, it doesn't seem to be heating or cooling as it should. As long as you've had it running for 10 minutes or so, you're going to be able to get in there and check your superheat. Very nice. Outdoor unit status, not a lot in that section on this yet. Uh, force fan mode, if you wanted to turn that on, you can. Maybe I had two controllers on one unit. This happens sometimes. You've got one unit controlling a large area. You want, to dis you want one to be able to display room temps and they can make set point changes. Another controller down the hall, say, would be maybe in the vice president's office. He's the one who can go in there and change the mode of operation. Doesn't happen a lot, but every now and then in large constructions, you'll see where there's two controllers tied onto one unit, and that's where you do that. And then, of course, there's a filter reminder. It goes off a timer. It doesn't really go off looking at how the static drops across the filter, but you can get in here and turn that on or off as well. So we've gone through the service settings menu, three pages in service settings. Now there is one final menu. Hold the cancel button again for five more seconds. You have to be in service settings to enter this menu. So go to service settings by holding cancel five seconds. Once you're in that, hold cancel five seconds again, and then you can go in the maintenance menu. There's good things in here. Just like I said, it's maintenance. You can see how long it's been operating. Here's where I could see expansion valve status, fan RPMs. If my pump, that MP is my condensate pump, it's always in the on position when this unit's on. If you add a humidifier, electric heat added to it, you can see all those things. So really neat feature. You're not gonna see that at a standard HVAC equipment. And then uh, also my expansion valve pulses are 61. My fan's running 510 RPMs and my air swing is in position too. So kind of neat stuff there. Not gonna get anything outdoor unit status on this one. Force defrost if you needed it, displaying error codes. And then if you needed to change what your unit number you could there. For us in the field running service, we don't use this menu as much. Most of the work we do, like I said, is in the service settings menu. So service settings menu is more for the tech. Maintenance menu, technician as well. And then of course, we get back to the home page. This menu here you open up, it's gonna be your end user. You might set it as a technician just to fine tune the unit way the customer wants it, but this is one they'll be able to access. That's a really quick overview of some of the things we run into on basic service calls on the Navstat controller, a really handy little controller, a great tool for a VRV technician to keep on his truck. So maybe you go into building, they don't have controllers, they're running all off BMS. Great tool to have. You can hook right up to the unit. You can pull all the information out of it. You can do a lot of troubleshooting with this device. So a really handy little controller. We've got some new ones coming out on the market soon, so look for those. Be a lot of features added to them. Well, that's all I've got right now for you on the Navstat controller. We're going to do some more videos coming up that'll get really in-depth in field setting. And again, if you've got any questions or comments, be sure to shoot them to us. Subscribe and like the channel and give us some more ideas for more videos to come.